Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace are yours this day from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Now it is probably no secret, at least it is a secret I have not tried to keep, that I am exceedingly partial to all things German. In part, this is likely due to my heritage. Do not let the name on the name tag fool you. This is as Italian as Italian can be, but I am a good 100% something Germanic on my mother's side, and my father's mother's maiden name is Kaiser, and it doesn't get much more German than that. Uh, but my predilection has to be also due in some part uh, with the fact that the German language itself has always just made sense to me. Uh, I can remember uh, going back into Frau Ingreo's Klassenzimmer in ninth grade uh, and seeing a piece of paper on the bulletin board and seeing that it was labeled Anwesenheitsliste. And the way that that word was put together, I just somehow knew that it meant attendance list. And that's how German does it, right? It just shams together words upon words upon words. It makes these long, long, long compound words like Fußballweltmeisterschaft and Rundenteilnehmer, which is the name that you give to any soccer team that qualifies for the World Cup. There's also Uber Schallsgeschwindigkeitsflugzeug, which is a faster than sounds speed aircraft, which makes much more sense in my mind than the word supersonic. I guess I just have to say that German makes sense to me because the names of things tell you exactly what they are. And as I was saying with the kids earlier, names are an important thing. Pastor David and I are wearing our name tags along with our pectoral crosses this week, not something we normally do. You're all wearing name tags today. It's an important thing to note and they play an important role in our reading from Genesis. In that day that the Lord God made the heavens and the earth, we hear of a garden planted in a place named Eden. We hear the names of the four rivers, which form the boundaries of the known world for those ancient people of God who composed the text of our story today. And when the man whom God formed, whose name Adam tells us about the earth, Adama, from which he was formed, was found to be alone, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air, and he brought them to that first human to see what the name of the animal would be. Now names, especially names of animals, tell us something about the thing that has the name. So quiz time, this is audience participation, liturgical participation, Saturday night did not do well. What color is the tail of a white-tailed deer. Very good. What kind of insects does a scissor-tailed flycatcher like to catch to eat? Nice. While we're at it, what common tool does the tail of a scissor-tailed flycatcher resemble? Scissors. And blue whales are blue. Well done. These names tell us things about the animals in question. Plants are not exempt either. A paper birch has bark that flakes right off, just like sheets of paper. It's also called the white birch because that bark is white. And when those animals with their terribly descriptive names weren't found to be suitable companions for a human, God makes someone else. God creates another person, bone of Adam's bone, flesh of Adam's flesh, someone fit for the name of partner. There's another name given in our reading today to that woman, to the second person. It's the name of helper, and I just want to spend a moment or two with that name because in English, helper tends to be a diminutive term. The term seems to imply that someone has done a task and the helper helped, <laughs> right? And sadly, this has caused no small amount of trouble in the English-speaking world as it regards this passage in Genesis. The trouble comes about because of another important thing about names. 
It's that names imply relationship. That's the trouble with helper, right? It implies a subordinate role in relationship. The Hebrew word there, however, doesn't really carry such a tone. The word used for helper, the word ezer, is actually most often applied to God in the Hebrew scriptures. A closer translation would probably be partner, but it sounds really weird in English to say, I will make him a partner as his partner. Maybe compatriot would be better, but for our purposes today, let us just remember that helper does not quite mean helper, at least in the diminutive and subordinate sense. And so to help in this little enterprise of ours, let us look at the other name that that second human is given in our reading today, the name of woman. The name connects these two ancestors of ours to one another. Their names are literally contained in one another's name. It works in Hebrew just like it works in English. Those names emphasize that they are bone of one another's bone, flesh of one another's flesh, and they are given the same task by God. And that task is to serve and care for all that God has made in relationship with God and with one another and with creation. These relationships are signaled by the names, as I said, that the man and woman are given. They solidify what that relationship means, and names tell us a lot about relationships. It is the first weekend of the NFL season, so let me use a football example to tell you how this works. There's a man who plays wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. His name is Steve Smith Sr. Quiz time again. What is his son's name? Steve Smith, and you don't even know him, and I doubt you're watching the Ravens this week. The name implies a relationship. It tells you who someone is. My son's name is Tony. It's Antonio Dominic. My name is Dominic Vincent. My father's name is Vincent Michael. The names that we have knit the three of us together and tell you the relationships between us. And because I can't resist sports analogies, there is a NASCAR driver named Carl Edwards. And almost anyone who follows stock car racing has at some point or another called him Cousin Carl. Now, Carl Edwards is not my cousin, although I have called him that. He is, however, the cousin of another driver named Kenny Schrader, and you wouldn't know that except for one time during an interview, Kenny called him Cousin Carl. And the broadcasters thought it was hilarious. So he's been called cuz ever since. And you'd never know that if it weren't for the name. So we have names that tell us about relationships. We have names that tell us something about ourselves, about the thing that has the name, like a feature. And we have names that tell us about our calling in the world. Names like tiller and keeper and steward. We have names that reflect the callings that God has placed upon our species since the beginning to generously care and serve all that God has abundantly made, and that includes each other. And all those different types of names that we have lead us to the name tags that you are wearing today and to the blank name tags on the front of your worship bulletins this week. So what I want you to do is get those worship bulletins out. And turn to that front page. They were much better about this than Saturday, too. They just looked at me. Get them out. Turn to that front page. Grab the pencils out of the back of your pews. And name yourselves. Name yourselves with important relationships. Name yourselves with descriptions or talents. Name yourselves with the gifts that you have to share with the people of God in this place and throughout the world. Name yourselves on the front of those bulletins because we are going to ask you to name yourselves on those time and talent sheets downstairs at breakfast today. We want you to name the gifts that God has given you for service because God has done it. We want you to name yourselves as God names you, with a calling and with all you need to fulfill that calling, with skills, yes, talents, yes, 
but most importantly, with God and with a community who walk beside you each and every step of each and every day in the service of God's people and God's world. And guess what? You each are that community for everyone else. So if you haven't done it yet or you haven't finished, take some time and keep naming yourselves on the front of those bulletins. I can see that many of you have finished. So let me only say that I hope you wrote lots of stuff there. I hope you wrote yourselves the sort of name that would make an exquisite compound word if we mashed it all together in German. I hope that it's longer than on Weisenheit's Lista or any of the words back in Frau and Greo's room. I hope that you did it because those attributes, those relationships, those gifts and talents, all those things that we asked you to use to name yourselves and the calling to use them come abundantly from our creating God. They come from the relationship that God forged with you in those baptismal waters. When the earth from which you are made was refashioned by God, reformed as God's child to live in the world. And in that moment, you were given a new name. Follower of Christ, called by God, steward of creation, proclaimer of justice and peace. And I won't try to pronounce it, but if you write that out in German, it takes more than one line on my sheet of paper. That's your name. And it looks good on you. Thanks be to God. Amen.